Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I've participated in a and events for years, although never quite like this. So I appreciate the time to speak to fellow marketers and to many of you whom I've worked with and know personally. It feels like the only proper way to begin today is to acknowledge what a naughty of a year 2020 has been. Personally and professionally, I do not think this compares to anything I could refer to. Sometimes I call the past few months a roller coaster in a tunnel or a sprinted marathon. Of course, we're not yet through October and still have quite a last mile to deliver, but it feels appropriate to take a step back and reflect for a moment on how profoundly our lives and the status quo we took for granted have changed. For instance, joining a new company has become a radically new exercise. I joined Google not so long ago, and technically I'm still a Googler, i.e. a newbie at Google. And when you join a new company, you get to know the people and then you figure things out. That's a simple way to talk about the first hundred-ish days. But I had no idea that figuring things out would happen from my home office, which is also going to be my only office for a while. Meanwhile, here are a few of the never seen before challenges we were confronting at Google. In March, like many of you, we realized that the imagery in some of our campaigns was no longer appropriate for the moment, which quickly led to a comprehensive review of hundreds of global campaigns and a sprint to turn around new creative. Being nimble is key to good marketing, but auditing, pivoting, and producing so much creative so quickly required us to be hyper agile, hyper data centric and hyper empathetic at the same time. Of course, the world has changed in other ways as well. That makes it hard to know exactly what to expect about what happens next. And as people and as professionals, not knowing what the future holds can be truly overwhelming. So what do we do? That's what I'd like to talk about today. We can decide to live one day at a time, but I am not sure that this is what our teams expect from us. For sure, we can't predict the future, but we can develop our muscles and stretch our ability to be ready for it. There are still things we can be certain of as marketers and things we can all do to be ready for what's next. I start with four trends that were underway even before COVID. We used to describe them as challenges, for marketers. But COVID has been a catalyst for these pre-existing trends, so much so that I think that today they are better described as imperatives, not nice to have. The first imperative is obvious, but worth stating. It's the hyper-digital acceleration. The importance of removing friction from consumer experiences and from business processes only continues to grow as more consumer behaviors are being digitized. For example, U.S. e-commerce penetration grew more in the first few months of the pandemic than it has over the past 10 years, and almost doubled from 16% to nearly 30%. Then the second imperative is empathy and personal relevance. As building hyper-human connections becomes key, especially with the ever-changing and complex consumer journeys of our new digital-centric world. In fact, some research we recently did at Google showed that ad speaking to human needs that often go unspoken, for example, the need to be inspired or to be taken care of, can drive big results, including double-digit jumps in purchase intent, click-throughs, brand love, and brand trust, all metrics that matter to all marketers. The third imperative is real-time marketing. Not so long ago, it sounded like sci-fi, but it's here. And the importance of using real-time consumer insights to identify and act on emerging pockets of demand and to measure their outcomes has only grown clearer as consumer demand keeps fluctuating alongside real-world events. The fourth imperative is to be a responsible marketer. The importance of respecting consumers' data continues to grow as their legitimate expectations of safety and value from sharing their data have increased. In every theme I've just mentioned, we've made continued progress and we still have a lot of work to do. As marketers, 
we can lead this digital transformation and prove business impact while showing agile and resilient behaviors. I think that's the most exciting job description. So I'd like to bring in a few stories that have come into my inbox over the course of the year from marketing leaders who embody exactly that kind of transformational value creating leadership. These are people I think of as marketing heroes because of what they are doing to help their companies be ready, not just for tomorrow, but for a post COVID world. We had somewhat started our transformation journey prior to COVID as we had become a much more data-driven organization. And what COVID did, it helped us to accelerate that transformation. We had to rethink everything. And if you're trying to further grow your business, you can't just take marginal steps. Historically, we used to think that we were omni-channel retailer. But as we got to COVID, you realize you really were still siloed pretending to be Omni. And this truly broke those silos. The beauty of it was, not only we were able to substantially grow our e-commerce, the, the brick and mortar equally grew. We believe we achieved uh, two to three year goals in two to three months. My name is Lisa Cecchio, and I am the Chief Marketing Officer at Wyndham Hotels and Resorts. It is seared in my memory. It was March 13th, which was a Friday. People were leaving the offices carrying their computer screens under their arms, and little did we know uh, what the future would bring. You know, almost half the borders of the world were closed down. Travel as we knew it, just, it kind of came to a standstill as we move into this recovery. Our competitive advantage lies in our ability to anticipate and respond to that demand. And now we really find ourselves in this welcome back recovery plan. So we've been using Google Signals to really identify the travel intenders. We've seen an uptick in the desire for national parks and more open spaces and lakes. And the booking window is much closer in. We're also continuing to refine our audience strategy with the implementation and launch of a new customer data platform and some of our um, CRM efforts. And what that is affording us is allowing us to go to our own customers who we know have had a tendency to travel to certain hotels or to certain parts of the country and speak to them directly. Our media is flexible and positioned to move wherever the demand is. And so I think this ability to be able to pivot, to be nimble, to constantly be looking at the plans, constantly tinkering with them, ensuring that the teams are engaged, that they feel empowered, that they feel supported. Despite the challenges that we've endured, we will travel again. And we look forward to welcoming our guests back. Salut Marie, je m'appelle Aubrey Trask et je suis le vice-président de Analytique de Marketing, Marketing Numérique et le Trading Desk chez Kaplan. I'm reaching out from Montreal, Canada, and I'm excited to share how we connect potential students with online universities through privacy-centric solutions. Our priority at Kaplan is delivering a world-class education to each of our students, and we are committed to protecting and securing the data of these students. We wanted a more privacy-centric process to analyze and act on our first-party data. We needed a place to bring our first-party data together. We also needed a way for us to anonymize, access, and analyze the data stored there. This is why we turned to Google Cloud, which gave us the advantage of being able to use machine learning to quickly and easily analyze in the same place we house the data. Using this historical information to identify common behaviors amongst past students, we were able to predict the likelihood a prospective student would ultimately enroll based on their activity on our site. But we can push the technology further to better understand our prospective students and help them succeed. Next up, we're planning to use machine learning to analyze the relationship between how our content is presented, the sequencing, the media formats, and individual student outcomes. I've already touched on the four imperatives accelerated by COVID that marketers need to be ready for. Before I close, I want to discuss one other area where Google and the entire advertising industry have a unique opportunity. 
if we can come together to meet a unique set of challenges. The goal here is to make long-term sustainable improvements in the area of diversity, equity, and inclusion. I bring this up separately because compared to every other topic I've mentioned, the issue of DEI stands apart. Because the pandemic is a single crisis that has disrupted lives around the globe for months, but racial injustice and inequity are systemic crises that have lasted for generations and will remain as societal challenges long into the future. To quote something Sundar, CEO said in June, as a company and as individuals who came here to build helpful products for everyone, Google commits to translating the energy of this moment into lasting, meaningful change. This sense of accountability is not new, but we've doubled down on the commitments we've made, particularly in the areas of Black Plus representation and inclusion, both in our work and in our teams, including at the leadership level. Company-wide, we've committed to a goal to improve leadership representation of underrepresented groups to 30% by 2025. And we're also clear that there is a long history of work to improve racial and social justice that's independent of our efforts to drive change in our company and industry. That's why we've contributed $44 million to support organizations working to advance criminal justice reform since the Charleston shooting five years ago. The latest round of grants, at $1 million each, went to the Leadership Conference Education Fund, the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund's Policing Reform Campaign, and the Movement for Black Lives. I would add that, even more so than with the other topics I've touched on, there are challenges involved, and they are real. And it's very important to be transparent about them. For me personally, Having been raised outside of the US, it took a lot of self-education to understand how to become and act as anti-racist in this culture. And I'm still doing the deep and detailed work looking at my behaviors and decisions every day as a leader. This is an imperfect analogy, but in some ways, I think the making improvements in DEI requires a multi-year strategy similar to what's required in combating climate change. The other level where there's still a lot of work to do is in how we operationalize our DEI commitments. Creating truly inclusive culture is hard, deep, detailed work, and it will be a long journey before we can declare we're there. So I'm excited about the commitments we've made, but it's too early to be proud. Fighting systems means it's not about quick wins, it's about detailed actions and timelines. Lastly, Yes, intentions and goals matter. It starts there. But it's also about assigning the highest consistent standards to our own bodies of work as marketers so the world can hold us accountable. And for instance, this is why we continue to audit all our creative through machine learning and human reviews and with industry metrics like AIMS, Cultural Insights Impact Measure. So if we fully embrace that mission in the work that we do, in who makes it, how we make it, and in what we make, then the advertising we create can be a form of activism that can help change the world for the better. As an example, before I go, I wanna share with you this powerful video that we put together with a number of external DI experts and community members to show how search is helping people better understand and support the Black trans community. Thank you. We have lost a lot of folks, haven't we? We have been told to be silent for too long. Just want my piece of the American pie. The oppression that we are going through is connected to everything else. When we talk about poverty and housing. The American Medical Association has declared the killings an epidemic. Let me tell you something. Black trans women are dying. Our lives matter. I am tired. I am so tired. Each 
of us have a place in stopping what happens. It's important for people to know that we are here, that we're loved, and we are just like everybody else. trans person is capable of creating art, creating innovation. We are qualified to do anything. We are a resilient people. We are a fierce people. We are a beautiful people.